Hello. Hello, everyone. This is Dr. Roger Paul. And tonight, we're going to continue our study on the seven Supreme Spirit groups. That's paper 17. We're on paper 17, section 3, paragraph 6. And that's page 201 in the original book. So let's say a little prayer and we'll get started. Father, thank you for bringing us together tonight that we might study your beautiful revelation you've given us. Uh, we thank you for the opportunity to share this with one another, and we thank you for the opportunity to share it with our friends and relatives. And we pray that you'll enlighten us a little bit and help us remember this so that we can share it with other people. And uh, we pray that you'll bless this group, bless everyone associated with it, and thank you for all those that listen from home, and bless them also. We say this in the name of your son, Michael, Jesus from Nazareth. Amen. Amen. All right. Okay, so three six. Um, I got a little side note for y'all tonight. I had a guy emailed me today said that he watched uh, some of our one of our UFO recordings. Uh, you know our nine UFO recordings and wanted to know where to find the other one. So I went out and made a link so that they're a little bit easier easier to find them. I'll put them on our website tomorrow on the main page so people can find them a little easier because it was kind of hard to find. Hi, Pam, where's hey, Pam? Pam? She's still Connected. connecting, okay. There she is. Okay, well, let's, hi, Pam. Hi, Hello. Pam. How are you doing tonight? Okay, who are we missing? Just Rodney, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, let's get going. Uh, uh, Jane, since you're on top tonight, how about you start it with 3-6 with us tonight? Okay. <clears throat> the former records of the universes are passed up by and through the angelic recorders, but the true spiritual records are assembled by reflectivity and are preserved in the minds of suitable and appropriate personalities belonging to the family of the infinite spirit. Hmm. They are the life records in contrast with the formal and dead records of the universe. And they are perfectly preserved in the living minds of the recording personalities of the infinite spirit. Now, keep in mind, these recording personalities are perfect. Per perfect beings okay so the, when they record something or when they remember something they never forget it okay unlike our little pea ba brains we can't remember what we ate this morning right <laughs> <laughs> so these beings are able to remember throughout eternity everything that they record and they learn Okay, and these include uh, the seraphim and that sort of thing and other recording personalities that they don't even tell us about in the book because they're not important to our ascension mm -hmm. plan, right? All right. And they also mention the live records in contrast to the formal dead records. Doesn't that sound kind of strange? Okay. Yeah, so the live yeah. records would be these living beings. OK, but there's also what they call the dead records of the universe. And I assume, uh, which is a bad thing to do with this book, but I assume that's some sort of data uh, process in which they record all information in a physical form. And that's what they would call the dead records, right? Sort of like a computer would record it. When you put something in on a computer and record it, it's a dead record because it's just ones and zeros, right? Mm -hmm. so, so Roger, can yeah. I ask a question? Yeah. There is a big difference between formal records right. and spiritual records. Right, there is. Spiritual records has anything to do with spiritual progress, okay? That's, That's why true yeah that's why they they what make the differentiation right you know so if you think about spiritual records you're talking about something that anything that's spiritual that happens to you or gives you some sort of spiritual benefit that would be part of the spiritual records in contrast to your everyday life right 
not everything in your everyday life has spiritual significance, right? I mean, really, it's uh, they call it scaffolding in the book. In other words, the things that's unimportant when you leave this earth, a lot of it falls away, they say, like scaffolding, because you no, no, no longer need it, you no longer need to remember it. And I think that's part of why they talk about, even in the Bible, that there's no tears in heaven. Remember that from the Bible? Right. You know why there's no tears in heaven or no tears in the mansion world? Because those beings that do, did not benefit you in some spiritual way or benefit you personally, those, those kind of people you won't remember anymore, right? Because they're not significant to your life right so they become the scaffolding that falls falls away and uh, who's to say which individuals in your life and what happened what events in your life becomes the scaffolding that falls away and you no longer remember but that makes sense to me if you think about it the things that's unimportant you don't need to remember right and you don't want to remember so the the point i'm making about this why there's no tears in heaven these people that have been mean and evil to you and done terrible things against you in your life, you won't remember it anymore. So that you won't have any tears of, over that any longer. Mm. Right. So if it had no spiritual significance to you, you won't remember. Okay. Mm. All right. Let's go on to the next one. Diane, will you take the next one? Okay. Give me a second. Give me a mouse. Okay. The reflectivity organization is also the new news gathering and the decree dissembling. Des oh, is that dissembling? <laughs> Dis um, disseminating. Disseminating, excuse me. The reflectivity organization is also the news gathering and the degree dissem disseminating mechanism of all creation. It is in constant operation in contrast with the per periodic, periodic functioning of the various broadcast services. Okay, so you have two types of information that comes through reflectivity, right? One of them is the news gathering or and the degree disseminating uh, information that comes through, and that goes out to all creation. But you also have something going on called the, called the broadcast services. And normally the broadcast services mostly have to do with the local universe affairs or the local super universe affairs that have to do with each and every personality. And they have these periodic broadcasts that go on pretty much all the time, right? But the news, the reflectivity is more concerned with the news and degrees that's been disseminated uh, that affect everyone in the super or local universe. That's the difference. <clears throat> Make sense? Mm -hmm. What would All be right. a good example of the various broadcast services? The broadcast services would, would, a good example of that, Gary, would be if Michael himself wanted to make a broadcast to everyone is in his local universe, right? Some information. Let's say he just wanted to wish well everyone because we had reached a certain point of enough planets or something like that, he might use the broadcast service to do that. You would actually see him come on the broadcast service and do this. Now, only thing I can compare this to is there must be like a big screen that appears or something like, you know, the holodeck that uh, comes in, in front of everyone and you can see this broadcast going on. So that would be a good example. Or another good example, is if, for instance, if a local system like ourself went into rebellion, they would probably put that on the broadcast system that such and such, uh, like for instance, Satania, uh, went into rebellion 250,000 years ago, they probably broadcasted that out and how many planets followed it into rebellion. Now, why would this be important to everyone else? because everyone else that has leeway to travel to multiple planets to visit them as student visitors, visitors may not want to go, right? It's like a forewarning that, that this planet or system's in rebellion, all right? So that's, that would be the sort of thing they would use the broadcast services for. And another, the next paragraph even explains it better than I did. 
right? Okay, Gary, would you take the next one? Everything of import. Everything of an import transpiring on a local universe headquarters is inherently reflected on to the capital of a super universe. And conversely, everything of local universe significance is reflected outward to the local universe capitals from the headquarters of the super universe. The reflective service from the universe of time up to the super universe is apparently automatic or self-reporting, but it is not. It is all very personal and intelligent. Its precise results are, are perfection of personality, cooperation, and therefore can hardly be attributed to the impersonal present performance of the absolutes. Okay, so anything that happens in on the super universe level or anything that happens on the local universe level is reflected back to each each other, right? So if something of important happens in the super universe, it reflects to the local universes. If something in, of importance in the local universe, it's automatically reflected back to the super universes, right? To the basically the ancients of days, right? And what they're saying here, it seems like all this is automatic, but it's not. There's intelligent beings <clears throat> behind all this happening that make sure that it, it functions right, okay? So it's all personal it has personality it's all very personal the way this happens and it's not because of the seven absolutes it just happens that not it sensational happens. Or anything it's not just... sensational no it's just the way it is set up and the way it's supposed to be all right uh billy would you take the next one yes while thought adjusters do not participate in the operation of the universal reflectivity system, we have every reason to believe that all father fragments are fully cognizant of these transactions and are able to avail themselves of their content. Okay, so, you know, this is interesting. We forget this all the time, but our father fragments are what? A piece of God the Father. Okay, a fragment of God the Father. Being that they're a fragment of God the Father, don't you believe that they know all, hear all, see all? I mean, there's nothing gets by them, no. right? No. Just like God the Father himself, every fragment and every single being already uh, is cognizant of everything that goes on in the, in the universe, right? So if you think about it in a certain way, because you have a thought adjuster, you are connected to every other being in the universe, aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> anyway, you question. Yeah. Okay. This is kind of basic. We have connected to us, I think, and I keep going to the uh, thought adjusters, but there's two other entities that are with us yeah the spirit of truth and and uh the holy spirit right the spirit of truth is the influence of michael or, or the eternal son both michael and the holy spirit's the inf influence of the local universe mother spirit or the infinite spirit right so we have all three parts of the trinity with us all the time so we've got, uh, and then the thought adjuster is? Father, the father fragment. Right? Okay, so uh, so the thought adjuster is the father. Yes. Uh, the spirit of truth is Michael or Jesus. And right. the Holy Spirit is the uh, mother spirit. Right, that's mm -hmm. correct. Or the infinite spirit. So you think about, you can think about it this way. God the father is the father fragment, right? God the Son or the eternal Son is part of the Spirit of Truth, mm -hmm. right? And the infinite Spirit is part of the Holy Spirit, which comes through the Mother Spirit, mm -hmm. right? Okay. So in this particular case, the thought adjuster would be the recipient of all this news. All this news all the time. Yeah, because he's he's 
omnipresent, omnipotent, omnip, omniscient. He's everywhere all the time, right? All knowledge all the time. So if you think about it, don't get a big head or anything like that, but you've got all knowledge of the universe with you all the time, right? If you learn how to tap into it. <laughs> or tap out. Or tap if I out. could tap into it, I would ascend. That's right. Exactly. If you that's exactly right. Gary, you got you hit it on the head. When you I tap did into right. it. Yeah, you tap into it, you fuse with the adjuster, and you will ascend to, pair, or to the mansion worlds immediately, right? Any way you look at it. Okay, let's go on. Uh, let's see, Millie just stepped out. Uh, Pimla, would you take the next one? Wild thought adjusters? Uh, no, uh, uh, the next one, during, during the present universe age. During the present universe age, the space range of the extra paradise reflectivity service seems to be limited by the periphery of the seven super universes. Otherwise, the function of this service seems to be independent of time and space. It appears to be independent of all known sub absolute universe circuits. Okay, so. It's they don't they don't sense it outside the seven super universes yet, do they? Because why? Outside yeah. the seven super universes, that's still the domain of what? The unqualified mm -hmm. absolute, right? So we don't qualify to go out into the outer space levels yet. Okay, and that's that's gonna come in the future. But the uh, the reflectivity itself seems to be totally separate from all sub absolute universe circuits now what would those circuits be they would be all those circuits we we studied at the beginning of this paper right the local universe circuits the suit seven the seven super universe circuits plus the four universe circuits which includes the personality circuit the circuit of the spirit the circuit of the infinite spirit and the paradise gravity circuit. So all this is independent of these circuits. Okay, so it runs on its own, which uh, I think is pretty important. Millie, would you take the next one on the headquarters? Yes. On the headquarters of each super universe, the reflective organizations act as a segregated unit but on certain special occasions under the direction of Majestan, all seven may and do act in universal unison as in the event of the Jubilee occasioned by the settling of an entire local universe in light and life. And at the times of millennium greetings, of the seven supreme executives. So when we get to the mansion world, when a, any local universe goes into full light and life, there'll be a jubilee and it will be broadcast over this reflective service. And we will all get to enjoy that, okay? Yeah. We'll also hear the millennial greetings of the seven supreme executives, okay? So that's something else we have to look forward to. I had to laugh. I had to laugh because this is highlighted. You know, I have this yellow highlighter that highlights Bible highlighter, highlights everything like a regular highlighter. And this particular thing, this particular thing, when I turn the page, Jubilee occasioned by the settling of an entire local universe in light and light. Yes. Yes. Important. Very important. That's so, what you're saying is we're going to hear this. Will be pass over, yeah. Uh, and if a set, if one of the super universes reaches light and life, which is going to be a long ways away unless number one's way advanced, yeah. And every local million universe. years, thousand years, would we say that was? Ma yeah, millennium was yeah was, was a million years. Mm -hmm. Every million years, we'll get to talk to the seven super executives. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Now keep it's, in mind this, though that we also get these jubilees happen every time a local universe reaches light yes. and life. 
and we not, we re, there's not a 700, super universe. Yeah, not a super universe, but a local universe. So that's there's seven hundred thousand of those. So oh. we'll we'll get to hear very quite a few of those over time, right? You hope, huh? Yeah, we hope. <laughs> <laughs> we hope so. If we Go make ahead. it there, we'll hear it, right? <laughs> you know, it's kind of hard to conceive of reaching light in life because there's constantly adding new souls yes. to that universe yeah. my understanding right. yeah. so the the process of adding new souls from a previous dimension kind of makes it impossible to get right light in life you get one guy the last person gets to light in life then we got joe smoke coming up here and messes everything up well, not you really, know? Gary, not really, Gary, because if you're raised in a situation where your local universe is in light and light, you'll be raised in pretty close to the most perfected uh, situation that you could ever have. So, for instance, if this this planet was in light and life and we had children, those children would be raised with the influence of all these beings being in light and life. So there wouldn't be any barbarianism. There wouldn't be beings that are raised under those circumstances, Gary, skip over the mansion worlds because mm -hmm. they're on such a high level when they pass. Okay, mm -hmm. so they don't have to get rid of all the beastly tendencies that we've developed on this planet, right? because they already have done that during their lifetime in the flesh. Well, here's okay. my thing. Okay, then maybe I'm misunderstanding. I always thought we would always matriculate. You know, we once do. we get to a certain level, we go to stage B and like in, in number five, if we're doing good, we yeah. merge with our thought adjusters. Right. And in seven, if we're not doing it yet, we disappear. No, we get remedial classes until we do fuse. Okay. okay. So and then you know, and then, but each my point is each time we're going up and up, up and, up, and up, up as we get as we get better. That's okay? true. So here's light and life. <laughs> the last person has gotten light and life. The thing is qualified. Right. And here I come. Boink, I messed everybody up. No, not necessarily, because if you were raised in a planet that was in light and life, you would not have the same tendencies as you do now. Okay. But my, I wouldn't go to that planet because I'm not in light and life. No, but if you were born into, into that planet in light and life, then you would have pretty much a perfect childhood, right? In other words, when I ascend, I'm actually born into that thing. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. You you grow into that as a child. By the time you're 16, 17 years old, you're pretty close to being a perfect human, really. Hey, Roger. I must have regressed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Roger. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Um, <clears throat> so I have a question. Because I would really like to find a mate, and I don't have a mate. Uh -huh. Is there ever a possible, does it say anything that when you go on to the Marancha world that you find someone who is in sync with you or soulmates? soulmates? Yeah. I don't care about soulmate. I'm just saying, you know, yeah, Pam, you Pam, they talk about it differently. They don't, they say there's no marriage, no giving of vows in the mansion world after, after earth. Okay. Uh -huh. But there is something they talk about choosing to be with a comrade or your mate okay yeah so when you get to the mansion worlds if you meet somebody that you get along perfectly with you can both choose to go through the mansion worlds together you can go to the whole way to paradise together if you choose to okay well, thank so you very much it's it's a choice it's a choice situation they just don't call it marriage anymore it's kind of like well, Think of think of Michael and the local universe creative spirit. They're mates, are they not? Mm -hmm. They were born mates, really. And there would be no reason for them to separate as mates because everything they think, do, and say are together, right? Mm -hmm. right? It's pretty much the same situation. Jane, did well, you? Well, great. Have a I'm so glad to hear that. Yeah, yeah. There's hope for all of us, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>
<laughs> Jane, did you have a question? You know, yet? Yes, I did. Sense. I did, Roger. Yeah. And yeah. the question that came to me was this. Is it wrong of me? Um, this is a confession. I'm telling you personally how I feel uh -huh. and what I think at the moment as we read about the reflective spirit. And I'm thinking, okay, I pray and hope I will always remember that there are reflective spirits and all that we have learned about um, the seven you know, the executives of the mm -hmm. seven supreme uh, spirits, et cetera, et cetera. But I'm thinking, I'm thinking to myself, I really don't need to fully understand this because when I get beyond the local universe, I am going to have to study this in great detail. Yes, you will. You will. Well, this so is just the right track in that lim in taking yeah, this, the burden this off is just your own. primer. Yeah, this is just your pri primer, primer, whatever you want to call it. Primer. Yeah. yeah. I will this remember the title and the curriculum. Yeah. Right. Because you told me about it, and here is in the book. Yeah, yeah. Oh, exactly. yeah. They told me I'd be taking that course. They said, yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Now you I, see I why. I like I, it that way, Roger. I find it comforting for me. Yeah. Now you see why, though, also I stress the importance of getting as much of this, absorbing as much of this in this lifetime as you can, so that when you get to the mansion worlds and they start talking about this stuff, you're not a ding dong. You know, you're no, not I, in the I heck don't reflect the spirits. Yes, of course. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's yes, right. Of course I know. Yeah. You won't stay in the remedial classes for a million years. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay. Rodney, would you take the number four here? Reflective image aids. The first paragraph. Yes. And I had a question or a comment yeah go ahead uh, obviously the mansion <clears throat> the mansion worlds for our area section are not in quarantine no they're not well part well, well, of the quarantine system the, the mansion worlds themselves are not uh, what's quarantine are the planets that feed the mansion worlds, right? Okay. 37 planets that went into rebellion, those planets are in quarantine and they will remain in quarantine till every last soul has been adjudicated, right? So the mansion worlds are for this section that has been quarantined. That's true. But the mansion worlds themselves are not. Are not. Quarantined. That's that's correct. So once we're yeah. there, we'll have full access to all this. Right. We're missing. Yes. Every bit so of that. Are we it's in exciting. quarantine? Yes, Gary. We've been in quarantine uh, two hundred and fifty thousand years. Okay, so our souls are not going into the mansion world until this adjudication of. No, we, we no we go we can go directly to the mansion worlds. The quarantine is so that other beings outside the quarantine won't be contaminated by what's going on inside the quarantine, okay? Now, I say that with the concept of this, Gary, even though we are, are in quarantine, student visitors are allowed to visit our planet, okay? They're not allowed to communicate with us. If it oh. wasn't, if it wasn't for that, they could probably communicate with us. So other planets that's not in quarantine definitely have a leg up. Yeah, that's that's true. That's but true because they are still got out of quarantine when we pass over. Yeah, when we pass over, we leave quarantine because we go to the mansion worlds. <laughs> and right? there's no long period of waiting except for the three days. Yeah, that's right. It's just like everybody else, right? Part of the quarantine is the fact you pass the test when you leave this world and you're faithful, okay? Because the experience of living on a quarantine planet 
is considered one of the highest benefits to an individual because that gives you experience in a rebellion based world. And most planets never get that experience. Okay. See, we, we have it backwards. We think all the universe is like us, running around like animals. They aren't. Most of the universe have an orderly society. Their children are, are raised in an orderly manner. They grow up. That's why many of them don't have to pass through the mansion worlds, is because they've already shed that beastly tendencies. Okay. So, uh, but it gives us an experiential benefit living on a quarantine planet when we get to the mansion worlds. And really, the angels, the archangels, or the uh, guardian angels, petition to be assigned to people on these planets because that, that's the only way they get this experience is to go along with someone on a planet like theirs that's been through it. Other than that, it's not available. Pam, I can't see hear you. And what is their benefit? Their benefit is the experience of seeing barbarianism, seeing these things that go on. I mean, can you imagine? I can't even imagine. Could you imagine being a, a more perfected being and you come to a planet where we run around and kill each other? Rodney sent me a video today that I, I it just blew me away, where these guys have created robots and taught them how to shoot guns, okay? We've got idiots out there creating artificial life, artificial intelligence, if you want to call it that, it's stupidity, but where they're teaching them how to shoot guns and distinguish between human beings and what non-human beings. But let me say this, if they're teaching them to shoot guns, what would be the purpose of shooting guns other than shooting people? None, right? I mean, it just makes sense. And that's when I, I all I could say back to Rodney is this is so sad because it is. It shows the stupidity in our society. The but, purpose, purpose of guns is to kill things. Yes, yes it is. It's they just, could it's, be a rich hunter that's lazy. <laughs> I well, doubt that. And to protect as well. Yeah, protect supposedly. Yeah. But the fact is you're putting the, the choice of life and death in a machine. Right. Okay. And who There's and whoever programs the machine. Yes, whoever. Pro There's nothing <clears throat> good about this. Why are they doing this? Because they're going to want to sell it to the military. They want to have armies of brainless soldiers. Well, Roger, also to the local police. That's yes. the police of the future yes. or security guards. Yeah, whatever. So anyway, you look at it, it's a bad move, right? Anyway, you look at it. Well, so, you stop and think about it. It's kind of stupid in the long run, except yes. for controlling civilization. Yeah. But, you know, your own country, if you go to war, the other team, other thing has machines. So you yeah. have two machines shooting at each other. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Okay, you know, so people, war, it's kind of stupid. It's, it's, it's stupid to start out. the most equipment, okay? Yeah. And then they're yeah. only going to send in humans as the last resort when they run out of the uh, equipment. Yeah. And that's kind of stupid because a human can't take a machine out, more than likely. Yeah. All right? Well, I mean, the it, thing about... It, it is... A, the only function I can see is world domination. Yeah, yeah. And the thing about the military, I was in the military, you know, I spent my time in the military, did my thing. The difference is this, a human being has the right to refuse any order they feel is, is unacceptable to their own conscience, okay? People forget about that. Even in war, you know, even though you're ordered to go kill people and that sort of thing it's an individual decision every time you pull that trigger every single time so it's it's not just it, the, the military is not machines we're sending out there that's the whole point of this it's human beings and human beings have the right to make the right decision that's what it boils down to. have you ever heard of flyers talking about dropping bombs 
Oh yeah. They don't, they don't see the people that they killed. They have no, no idea. No. They just drop bombs and blow up buildings and people. Yeah, out in Nevada, they got a whole center out there. That's all they do is sit at a console, just like a computer all day long. They drop bombs, kill people, that sort of thing, right from the thing Yeah, the current, the current drones. No, no, no yeah. conscience to that. No, There's absolutely no. no conscience to that. Yeah. Okay, well, let's get off this. Let's go back to the reflective age here. Rodney, would you take the next one, please? Hey, yes. However, one more thing here. Yeah. The way I look at quarantine, is say our section that is this section of space yeah. is quarantined. Say it was all controlled by AT&T. AT&T just stopped their cell phone activity. Yeah. So nobody can communicate. And yeah. I think it was also the, maybe one of the reasons this section was put in to quarantine was that so that the enemy could not communicate. Yeah, yeah, it that's right. Well, stifled it. Well, th let's 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 take one more thought in here before we get off of this completely. Remember when we were studying the UFO phenomena? Remember that? Doesn't it make sense that maybe the reason that many of these UFOs are not communicating with this planet is what? Because we're in quarantine. Because we're in quarantine. Our planet. That's and right. Whereas planet. theirs is not. That's right. That's right. You know, possibility. that May, the Roswell incident of 1946 mm -hmm. may be an indicating that the adjudication has been performed. Completed. No, I don't, I, I don't yeah. think so. I think we, it would be pretty clear when it does, because when the quarantine is lifted, the universal broadcast will be restored to the planet. And when the universal broadcast is restored to the planet, we all should have access to it. Every human being. Okay. Somehow. Yes, somehow. And we don't. So that's why I believe it's not been lifted yet. I really do. Okay. Okay. Number four. Number four. The reflective image aids. The 49 reflective image aids are created by the reflective spirits. And there are just seven aids on the headquarters of each super universe. The first creative act of the seven reflective spirits of Uversa was the production of their seven image aids, each reflective spirit creating his own aid. The image aids are in certain attributes and characteristics, perfect reproductions of their reflective mother spirits. They are virtual duplications minus the attribute of reflectivity. They are true images and constantly function as the channel of communication between the reflective spirits and the super universe authorities. The image aids are not merely assistants. They are actual representatives of their respective spirit ancestors. They are images and they are true to their name. Now this is kind of hard to understand. <clears throat> All right, so I'm going to try to break it down for you. Uh, there are seven reflective spirits on each headquarter of all seven super universes, right? That's 49 reflective spirits, right? So each of the reflective spirits created their own image aid, okay? So there's one for each of the seven reflective spirits on every super universe so that means there's 49 what image aids just like there's 49 reflective spirits and these image aids are the communication division for the the reflective spirit and the local universe 
I mean, the super universe authorities, which would be the ancients of days. So it would be the image of AIDS that would be taking messages from the reflective spirits to the ancients of days. That's why this is so important. Okay. It's not the reflective spirits that goes to them directly, but it's their image AIDS that handle this. Can I ask a question? Yeah. I thought... Here it is. This is a reflective spirit. Right. He creates an aid, which is basically, I was under the impression, the mother spirit or infinite spirit. No. Okay. No. I'm wrong there, huh? You're wrong there. Yeah. Yeah. No. The mother spirit, the local universe mother spirit is created by the infinite spirit. Okay. That's a totally different division of being. Okay. okay Those so are those are the ones that are married to the Michaels, okay? The mates of the Michaels. So the local universe mother spirits, there's a local universe mother spirits for every single Michael in each and every local universe, okay? Okay, they so they're yeah, not- Because the I got the reflection, it says reflective mother spirit. That's kind of what threw me off. Yeah, it's, it's, yeah, they shouldn't have really used that term because it makes it confusing. They're talking about the, the reflective mother spirits are the original reflective spirits. You follow me? In other words, the reflective spirits, each one of them is the mother of its aid. You follow me? Right. It's Got only it. a mother because it created an That's aid. Right. That's right. The okay. infinite spirit, right? This is this is the infinite spirit. Um, we are far away here from a local universe, is what I'm trying. Yes. That's to. right. That is. This this is the, the headquarters. Far. Yeah, this is headquarters of the super universe. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So the, yeah. the mother spirit who is a local I guess universe and say a co-creator with Michael. Yes. Of Nebadon. Right. We are nowhere near them here. No. Yes. We're not. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Now that's part of the mystery of the reflective spirits is they're able to reflect these images to the local universe, right? They, they, they reflect them to the local universe and information from the local universe is reflected back to these reflective spirits. Yes. Right. Okay. So what you're saying, Roger, is this, if I understand you correctly, in summary, <clears throat> there is a great hierarchy. Yes. And there yeah. is precision, perfection, totality of all that transpires and that's, nothing is lost. That's exactly correct, Jane. That's right that's on the what line. I get. Yeah. Yeah, that's right on the money. Now, Keep in mind, these are the beings they tell us about so that we understand, but there's tons and tons of other beings created by the infinite spirit to assist the beings in doing their job, right? It's not like there's only seven uh, reflective spirits and they got to do everything on their own, you know, exactly. they have aids and you know they create their own image aid of themselves and i'm sure there's tons of beings that work in liaison with these things to make everything come together right turns into an army of reflectivity really if you think about it right all right let's go on to the next one we're back to you jane okay <clears throat> The reflective spirits themselves are true personalities, <clears throat> but of such an order as to be incomprehensible to material beings. <coughs> Hallelujah. Even on a Supreme Universe headquarters sphere, they require the assistance of their image aids in all personal intercourse with the Ancient of Days and their associates. In contracts between the image aids and the ancient of days, sometimes one aid functions accept acceptably, while on other occasions, two or three or four or even all seven 
are required for the full and proper presentation of the communication entrusted to their transmission. Likewise, the messages of the image aids are variously received by one, two, or all three ancients of days as the content of the communication may require. You see how everything is interconnected? Absolute precision. You know, absolute precision, that's correct. Roger? So, yeah. Uh, let us not forget what we learned was the reason we, there are seven image aids on eight, seven reflective spirits on each super universe capital is because there are, it's the Trinity that the- It's the personality so you combination have seven of seven. different frequencies. Yeah. So That's perhaps right. sometimes the message Six frequencies, just not quite enough yes. to get the full effect. Yeah. So it may be, yeah, if the message for, for instance, it was something about God the Father, it would probably just take one aid to do that, wouldn't it? It would take one reflective spirit. But if the message was about God the Father and God the Son, then it would take more than just one because you need the combination of God the Father, God the Son, and then you need the one, the one that's just God the Son, and then you need the one that's just God the Father, right? Correct. Yeah. And it's like you said before, Roger, what you thought as before is that this seven and the combination thereof, all coming from the three, the Trinity, the Paradise uh -huh. Trinity, encompasses all possible combinations. All possible combinations, that's correct. It's the totality, absolute infinite totality of, the of Trinity. anything that can that, be. That's right. Millie. If it's that complicated for them to pass information among themselves, imagine <laughs> that, Imagine how difficult it was for them to put this book together for us. Oh, exactly. my Lord. Can you yeah. imagine that? And put it in human language. You know, our language is not the easiest thing in the world. Right? Well, it's not just human language, it's English. Yeah, English language. That's American right. English. Yeah, I'll never forget when I studied uh, Greek, you know, when I was studying to be a Baptist minister, um, all the different concepts of love, you know, and all the different words for the type of love you're talking about. We only have one word, you know, in the English language. So you can imagine how frustrated this must have been, first frustrating this must have been to the to these, this reveal core, because they had to come up with terms and things that we would understand, right? Or try to. Or try to understand. <laughs> and then you have guys like me come along and try to muddy the waters, trying to explain it. <laughs> <You know? laughs> they have difficulty communicating among themselves. It takes one, two, three, sometimes all seven to get yeah. the thought across. That's and right. yet they want to get these thoughts across to us on one yeah. piece of paper. Yeah. <laughs> you know, Roger, you just made me think That's about something. something. What's that, Gary? Why didn't they why didn't they give it to us when they could have given it to Greece, which has a much more precise language? It may have been easier for them. I'll tell you what it was, Gary. I, this is my opinion. It's democracy. Okay. This back in uh, the 30s when they revealed this book, this was the most democratic country in the world, okay? So what they were trying to do is reveal it to a country that not only understood democracy, but back then we lived democracy, not like we do today, right? We've got a real problem in this country today because we're getting away from the roots of the founding fathers. That's the real problem. And I think it's created a problem for us to communicate properly with other countries because if you come from China or if you come from Korea or if you come from any of the Oriental countries, you conceive of things differently than we do. Right. And that's what we talked about this the other night when we were talking about these pictures, how uh, Oriental gentlemen created many of these pictures in this presentation that I put together with the book. 
And his concepts are from an oriental perspective and an oriental mind, right? Where my concepts are from a democratic perspective, from a democratic mind, because that's what the way I was raised, right? So each person is different and each person's gonna put their own slant on what they're trying to express, right? It's just human nature, right? Okay, let's see, let's go on, let's get this image eight in here before we quit tonight. Uh, the next one, I think, Diane, I think you're up again. The image aids serve forever by the sides of their ancestral spirits, and they have at their disposal an unbelievable host of helper Sirconophon. The image aids do not directly function in connection with the training worlds of ascending mortals. They are closely associated with the intelligent service of the universal scheme of mortal progression, but you will not personally come in contact with them when you sojourn in the, in the Uversa schools because these seemingly personal beings are devoid of will. They do not exercise the power of choice. They are true images, wholly reflective of the personality and mind of the individual spirit ancestor. As a class, ascending mortals do not intimately contact with reflectivity. Always some being of the reflective nature will be interposed between you and the actual operation of the service. Okay, a couple things I wanna mention here uh, at the beginning of this. Uh, first of all, the fact that the image aids do not have free will and they do not have personality, okay? Their personality is the reflection of that individual spirit ancestor. What are they saying? In other words, their personality is the reflection of the original reflective spirit, right? Okay, so they don't have free will. They don't make choices on their own. The other thing I want to mention here is the, uh, the host of the helper, Sakonafem. Do you see that? Mm -hmm. Very mm -hmm. beginning. Sakonafem are angels of the super universe level, all right? Mm -hmm. Where seraphim are angels of the local universe level. You got that? Now we have studied this years ago, but we haven't studied it recently. So when they're talking about Sakonafim, Sakonafim are angels uh, on the super universe level. So this says here they have an unbelievable host of helper Sakonafim. They're, they're uh, super universe level angels. So they're high up. Okay. And this is their, uh, this, this, these are their aids in doing their job. Right. And the last thing it says down here is that we will really not have intimate contact with reflectivity. There'll always be some type of reflective spirit or reflective nature interposed between you and the actual operation of the service. We'll get to enjoy it, but we won't have direct contact with any of these beings, right? All right. Okay, we're at 655. I think I better stop there because we're getting into a whole different ball game down here. Uh, on the seven spirits to the circuits. Let me give you a little teaser for next time. The seven spirits of the Havona circuits are what we're going to talk about next are spirits that only have to do with Havona, okay? Not the seven super universes, okay? And they kind of set these out on the side, but it's important that they get it in here in the same set of information. Right. So we're going to go off in a little bit different direction next time. Yeah, Pam, go ahead. Unmute yourself. Pam. Unmute yourself. I can't hear you. Pam, I can't hear you. There you okay, go. Okay, now. Um, and so this is the next section that we'll be deal dealing with. Right. The seven yeah. spirits, spirits of the circuit. Corona circuits. Right, right. And remember, the Havona circuits are the seven circuits of Havona itself. And this picture down here kind of sits. See, we have a spirit for each one of the seven spirit circuits of planets. We're talking about circuits of planets, right? 
and they 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 actually break down each one of these circuits how many planets are in each circuit i don't remember if it's in this paper or another one but mm. uh they actually tell you how many planets are in each one of these circuits okay wow that's the so. spheres uh in havana in havana. seven rings the, yeah yeah the rings of havana right oh, they go oh, around yeah okay and that's what we'll take up next time so let's have a little prayer and we'll close for the night. Um, Millie, would you like to play, pray for us tonight here? I get my speaker turned on. Is it on? Yeah. Thank you, Heavenly Father, for letting us gather here one more time. We appreciate your tolerance, your patience with us as we work our way through this book page by page, paragraph by paragraph, sentence by sentence. Help us to absorb it. Help us to understand it. Help us to recognize the beauty of your uni super universe, super universes, the beauty of your all in all. Help us to understand how you put it together so that when we get there, we'll be able to help you manage it. It's got to be a really big project. We thank you for this and we thank you for the book. We thank you for Roger, and we thank you for this beautiful evening. Amen. 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 And thank Amen. you at home for joining us. Please come see us again. Uh, Amen. Uh, next Tuesday. Next, next Tuesday. How arrogant, how arrogant of me to think that we're going to help him keep oh, his... <laughs> thank you. What's, what's oh, they have a sense of humor, don't they, Millie? What it's all yes, they do. Let's they hope do. so. Turn <laughs> laughing every time we meet. I have a question. <laughs> I have a question. Millie, you have a rolling in the eyes. No, no. <laughs> Millie's got a question. Yeah, Millie, what's your question? Before I, show I have a um, have a neighbor who's um after she moved in here, she frequently got lost. She just didn't know her way around. She lost mm -hmm. her phone. I told her to go home, and I'd call her, and she could hear it. And she came back and said she couldn't hear it. I had to go to her house, just two doors up, and um, call on her, call her phone, and we'll help her walk around the house. So she found it in a jacket pocket in the closet. But she's been losing it little bit by little bit. And uh, of the last year or so, her children have understood this, and they've had uh, daycare with her, and um, they've had hospice with her lately. And I understand today, one of my neighbors was out and there was a truck pickup blocking her driveway. Well, it could be halfway down the street and it would block her. But uh, she went out and talked to the young man who owned the truck and that was Ken. That was my neighbor's son, uh, adult, 50s something son. And he said that mom has had a stroke and she is dying. Oh, well, wow. hell, she's been dying for six months. She's been really, the caregiver would bring her out and walk her around in a wheelchair just so she'd get some fresh air. And I would go up and try and talk to her. And she she couldn't hold a thought. She couldn't communicate. She was right. her mind was going, all right, what's going to happen when she leaves her body? When she goes to the man, when, when she gets him around your body, what right. kind of a mind will she have? Will she remember all the good things? She will. She will. Milly. She'll have total recall of everything that's significant in her life, including things that happened after she lost her consciousness of herself. OK, because those things will not be stored in her memory patterns, but they will be stored by her guardian angel. Right. So her guardian angel will rehearse these things with her when she wakes up on the mansion world. So she'll have total recall of everything that's happened in her life. But as far as the universe is concerned, uh, they really consider you passed on at the time that your mind stops functioning properly. OK, ah, so everything okay. after that, even though you're experiencing things, will be rehearsed by your guardian angel. So you have recall of those things that happened. OK, you're saying right now my guardian angel is recording everything that I'm learning. So I don't have to think that much anymore. <laughs> <laughs> 
no, I don't think I'm saying that. <laughs> This Maybe it's just it. the opposite, Gary. Maybe you have to think more. <laughs> Glenda had 70, 75 really good years. I mean, she was a uh, yeah. mover shaker. She she had a, a good family and, and yeah. sons and daughters and a nice house and a really crappy husband. So she finally left him mm, yeah. and moved over here. And uh, one of her sons bought this house and she's been living here complaining bitterly when she would get her tax form or property tax when well, I told her it was entirely too high but she'd go go to the commissioner and tell them how old she is and they'll take some off and next year she complained again so I called her son Ken I said Ken let's talk about this I said do you own that house or does she he said I own it nearly let's his mama live they bought, yeah. bought her as place for his mama to live he doesn't rent it out we don't do that in this, this community you can't yeah. buy a house and, and rent it but yeah. uh, he probably bought it for his mother but um he he was knowing that she was going to need some security a smaller space and a place all of her very own and she was fine until she two months ago, or last month of the month, I think the month, I think October, she turned 79. And mm -hmm. she lost it about four years before that. She was starting downhill. So yeah. she had a good 70, 75 years. Yeah. And and then it happened. Yeah. Well, it'll it'll all work out in the end. She'll be able to remember everything. So let me uh thank you, Roger. You're welcome. Let me stop the recording here.